it a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to the Tower Dive TV Weekly Tournament number 28. I am Lunette the Herald, and casting with me today will be Kuro Makai. And in the call, we're actually joined by Azaraki and Sakimans, your previous casters for the day. How is everybody doing? Uh, five okay. seconds. You know, I went on this whole thing just so anxiously. One, maybe even two seconds. And it turns <laughs> out to be five. Just, no, um, it can't happen. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Unprofessional. That is twice <laughs> the time. Yeah, the chat's even it. saying, oh, that was more than two seconds. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. We, we, we need more team communication. If it makes you feel any better, I don't even have everything up that I'm supposed to. I am an ill-prepared caster, and I should be ashamed of myself, quite frankly. Oh. All right, but it looks like we are headed into the picks and bans right now. I'm doing this as if I'm the one casting, but I will not Appreciate be. So. Continue. <laughs> Good thing I was just trying to do that when you were having your lovely conversation. Yeah. So Kuro and Lunette, go ahead and take it over. Uh, I'll see you guys maybe at the next break. I think I'll uh, hop in. See you hey later, guys. guys. My name is Veruda, so I will be impersonating him for the cast. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't have an overlay with your name <laughs> on it. So, Come on. At all week. I know, I know. Well, remember, we didn't know if you were going to be here or not, so... Uh, uh, a great excuse. I told you I was going to be here. <laughs> Best excuse NA. I will only buy it if I can throw $300 at your account. Oh my god, please no. No more. There we go. We're, we're done. <laughs> we're done with this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, summoner blockers are up. For the blue team, Singe, Lysandra, Nautilus being taken off the board. And for the purple team, Thresh, Nidalee, and Jarvan. No surprise seeing Lysandra and Singe being taken out of the equation, especially after the last game. Singe and that Lysandra combo, just an absolute dominating powerhouse. So it was really difficult for people to deal with towards the end game. Yeah, not only that, but Maestro was playing Hecarim like nobody's business. He was everywhere he needed him to be, and I'm actually surprised that wasn't a targeted ban as well. Maybe the blue team knows a little bit more about Hecarim than the other team did. That could be the case, but you can see the first pick Hecarim coming out from Insignia. Uh, are we in the semifinals or the finals match? You tell me. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, well, once we figure that out, because they, there are things that I want to talk about about the team that I know about them that I would rather not reveal until we get to the finals. And oh, look, I got I got an overlay for you, Kuro. So now it's just labeled noob.png. Thank you, Simon. I appreciate that. Apparently this is a quarterfinal, so I won't give everything away here. But Hecarim is a fairly popular pick for our team. Now, we've gone ahead and actually watched these guys over about the last week before deciding to take them on. They actually won the last Alienware League of Legends tournament to ever be done. So that was a huge, huge honor for them. They did an absolutely amazing job, and it was a complete stomp, which was probably the most impressive thing we saw. They took it in a 2 for 0 and just like 20 minute games all right off the bat against the other finalists it was absolutely amazing so really great competitive team here we've seen saga play a lot more sona lately um than they have before i think i think that's who you look i don't know who all the team members are or what all the roles they're in i literally just met these guys last week so yeah well um <laughs> with them filling in like this uh i have a list of the team roster that they were using and that they're going to use for the team uh we're gonna see that control in the top lane uh, let me actually get to the whole list so i don't sound like an idiot S meantime oh uh, geez where is it okay uh that control is going to be the top lane uh envy is of course going to be in the mid Dooley is the 80 carry as we've seen him uh doing maestro is still the jungle and then the support they're uh choosing between right now the support they were using in the alien where they're uh, thinking about uh, sending them back to get a larger champion pool. So they have a sub coming in right now. Uh, so who knows? Maybe we, we're seeing uh, Matsu being that uh, person being rotated in. I couldn't tell you. We'll have to see what happens here, but we can see the potential MF pickup. MF Hecarim acts absolutely a very strong combo. You come out with that bullet time coupled with the Hecarim ulti. You're not only looking at an AoE fear that's going to scatter people around, but also the huge potential that we've seen from MF. She really came to light in Season 3 as this very hard carry. She doesn't have to win her lane 
her lane to be able to do well in the late game and that's one of probably the most impressive things about her as long as you can pull out a decent farm you're still going to be looking very good to come the late game and we can actually see the Varus pick locked in so totally trolled by my own team and then Morgana hey if they're not trying to troll you they ain't trying hard enough so however I think the people you should be looking at is maybe this uh Double bringer rocking a Lulu. Now, very strong support, as you've always said. And I agree. She is very capable of fitting in with any team comp, literally any team comp, and takes a strong presence in lane. So, how do you feel a Lulu versus a Sona matchup is going to go? Um, it really depends on the kind of runes that Lulu goes for and what build they go into. Now, Lulu recently got somewhat of a nerf where they went ahead and adjusted the mana cost on her Q because it was too low and people were just spamming Glitter Lance. They could use EQ combos without really any worry about their mana, and it just allowed Lulu to kind of wreck bottom lanes. But if she can go ahead and land down a couple Glitter Lances, if she's running anything with a little bit of penetration and bulk in it, like I tend to run in Lulu and is very popular over in Korea, we'll see a dead Sona in absolutely no time, as long as Kate has good follow-up on it. Kate has got the range, so if Lulu can go in there and really just try and poke out Sona in the first couple levels, she'll be good to go. Well, it's a good thing that we have a jungler on the purple team to deny a kill using that smite to kill some... Oh, wait, that's not a minion. Never mind. <laughs> but no, I mean, Lulu, she, she's very strong. Um, she's not quite as strong because it's much harder to control her mana pool as opposed to how it used to be upon release. So she is still having some minor issues there with that, but all in all, she should be able to poke out Sona no problem. And this is one of the threats of having a smaller champion pool, especially somebody like Sona. And I'm actually going to wait until the three minute delay and then we're going to check out both Sona and Lulu's runes because they're going to be major game changing things in here. Whether, uh, you know, Sona is running extra bulk, if Lulu is running penetration, all of these could point to whether or not that bot lane is going to be won or lost. A lot of it is going to come down between a war of the supports, as both Caitlyn and Varus have the ability not only to farm, but poke from a very massive range, especially with Varus's Q and Piltover Peacemaker coming out from Caitlyn. It's actually why I like Varus over Kaylin is because Varus can either be with a aggressive support and become a kill lane, or you can take a more passive support and still be a farming lane. Either way, you have that ability to be versatile, and that's why I like Varus over Kaylin in most cases. The one problem that Varus does have that Caitlyn doesn't have is he doesn't have anything to help him reposition, and that's probably the biggest detriment to him and why we don't see him picked more often. He's a, He is a very, very hard scaling late game carry. If he gets some kills off in the early game, he is a serious threat and will definitely hurt. He, I mean, he's just like Tristana or Kogma in that respect. Um, not quite as good as Vayne, but still exceptionally good come the late game if he can get a couple kills under his belt. So, uh, I mean... It's all going to come down to really how this laning phase goes between the supports and how late game goes in terms of positioning for both Caitlyn and Varus. But speaking of positioning of the AD carries, the nice thing about that is Hecarim and Bla Vlad both have some really good backline dive that they could get onto this Caitlyn and just kind of isolate and deal with her. I do like what the purple team is going with. They're going with a very AoE heavy comp. They've got the Hecarim Fear coming out, the Varus Ultimate, the Sona Crescendo, Morgana's Ultimate, and then to top all of that off, they've got the Vladimir Ultimate to go ahead and increase the damage coming out from everybody. So as those lockups are going down and the AoEs coming out from Morgana, we're just going to see more and more and more damage goes down, especially if she manages to land a nice uh, pool onto somebody. You're going to look at Shredded MR on top of Vladimir and it's just going to be so difficult to deal with. I, honestly, yeah, that sounds a lot, of, a lot of fun. However, the blue team seems to be going for a lot of uh, ranged poke as well as single target, just flat burst, zero, full to zero. So I kind of want to see how this goes, especially with Zach being as tanky as he can be. We, we, we've seen a Zach build like straight AP with just a little bit of health and he was still out tanking everything he needed to do in the last week's tournament. So maybe we'll see something like that again. Maybe we'll see a full tank. It really depends on how, uh, fall of the, uh, whatever. <laughs> I can't, I can't read Having his name. difficulties? No, 
Now this is something interesting to note and will certainly make an impact in the bottom lane. So we talked about how it's becoming more popular in Korea, or at least it has been for the longest time, for Lulu's to actually start running mixed penetration. This is because her auto tags deal a mix of magic damage and physical damage. And against squishier supports like Sona, they tend to really lend well into just being able to harass very hard with that Glitter Lance uh, in combination with this. Something that we saw when we looked at the rune pages is that Lulu's running a standard a generic support room page which consists of MR, armor, and gold per tens, whereas Sona is the one who's actually running magic penetration. Now, this is something that we've seen uh, Saga do before in terms of playing Sona, running that added bit of magic penetration to really make sure that those Qs hurt and those power cores just deal as much damage as possible. But it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens with this in the bottom lane, because this could certainly turn the tide of who wins it, depending on how it's played up. If Sona can land some nice cues onto Lulu, she's going to be hurting. She doesn't have too, uh, too much of an investment into bulk, and Sona with that magic penetration is going to poke away as effectively as Lulu would be able to. Sounds promising. So what we're saying is we have a bunch of squishy uh, supports who are going to have a lot of fun dodging the AD carries trying to poke them down. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. But I mean, in the meantime, let's let's try focusing on one of these other matchups. You know, we've talked a bit about the bot lane. We've talked a bit about the junglers. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to mid lane. We've got a Rise versus Morgana. Morgana is a champion that we saw fall out of favor both towards the middle and end of Season 2 as well as early Season 3. Now kind of what we're seeing is we are seeing her come back into favor. We've seen a lot of people pick her up recently. Not necessarily for competitive play like this, but we're starting to see her pick rates go back up. She's a very good champion still, and, and the entire idea with her is just to push out your lane with that puddle and then go and gank and consistently be roaming after pushing your lane. So it'll be interesting to see how she fares against Rise. She's got that spell shield, so she's going to have a bit of a safer laning presence against him. But it's interesting to note, I mean, you're, you're looking at Rise being picked into Morgana. So that's always something to note. She didn't know she was going to go up against an AD or an AP in mid. So we'll see how this matchup goes. And Sona loading in on a pingy potato. They're all summoning for me, so who knows? Okay, maybe I'm on the pokey potato. Maybe. So, what we're going to do is, Ryze can go against a Morgana no problem, because his rune prison is a target rather than a skill shot, whereas Morgana's Dark Binding is a skill shot over a locked target. So, it's going to come down to a skill matchup of where Ryze can, can position himself behind creeps to avoid Morgana's main source of damage, which is the Dark Binding in the pool. So, it all depends on his positioning and how he plays against this Morgana. We'll really have to see what happens. I mean, Ryze doesn't have any any skill shot abilities in his entire kit. Everything is targeted. And it'll it'll definitely be interesting to see kind of what what wins out in this skill shot over direct spell war. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is gonna come down to player skill, but I also think a lot of it is gonna come down to if Morgana can properly deaden a lot of the damage that's gonna be coming out from Rise. So we've gone ahead and gotten all the summoners lined up, and now we can see both teams gathering around for the potential invade and defend. Yeah, and we see the blue team poking out. The red team already knows they're oh, there. Oh, here Are we they go. Gonna... Zach is going to face check that bush. And we see the level one engagement. Lots of damage going down onto Zach. We have had the ignite used on the part of who used that ignite. That would be a rise with an ignite down. No other summoner spells used on the part of the red team. A very good decision on their part, except for Ghost coming out from Hecarim, which isn't going to be too detrimental to him in the early game and also is on a much much nicer cooldown uh, compared to many other summoner spells. So even though Hecarim got out of there, he's not going to have to worry about it too much. However, Rise without that Ignite is going to bite him in the ass come this laning phase. He's not going to have nearly as much kill potential onto this Morgana as he would like. Minions have spawned. Absolutely, and Ghost is so strong with Hecarim because, as we know, his passive says, the more move speed you have, the more AD. So it's a good thing uh, that we're seeing Hecarim say Ghost. Obviously, it's a common sense thing. But it's always nice to know the reason behind it. Yep, I think some of my icons are bugged in the game. I'm looking at these now and I'm going, that icon shouldn't be up above Hecarim's head. But let's go with that for now anyways. So hopefully that'll go away. 
uh, after some time, maybe if and when he dies. I say if because holy cow, I mean, our, our team, we've seen them play before. We've seen them come out with some ab absolutely phenomenal plays in just about every game they've ever done. Even in the games that they lose or they lose in the laning phase, we've seen them come back and just be so cool about everything, so level-headed and just able to come in and really decimate everybody that they've gone up against. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys fare against one another now. Speaking of how things are going to go against, look at the lane swap we actually have. Ryze is going against Vladimir in the mid, and it's Jason Morgana in the mid. Uh, Ryze and Vlad in top, whoops. Yeah, hang on one moment. It looks like we have an invade uh, at the red buff. Zach coming in here, and Hecarim without that ghost is going to be in a bit of trouble. He's trying to get back down under his turret, but Zach, you know, he does have that passive, so he's not fearing it too terribly much. Ryze coming up to try and combat that, and it looks like... There will be no kill secured there. I'm sorry, guys. I'm fixing the overlays now. I completely forgot about having the text up there. So. That is totally awesome. Because as we see, Zach is moving back in now into the red buff to go ahead and steal that from Hecarim, which is actually going to put him behind quite a bit. Now, I'm not sure Zach can take it. He does have his smite, so actually I'm pretty sure he will be fine. However, will Hecarim be able to get there? No, the smite goes down. And he's going to get away safely. This is going to put Hecarim back in levels and his ganking potential. All right. Now I just have to go ahead and fix this other one, which I totally don't actually have a name for. But yeah, we can see in the mid lane the gank going down. Zach coming up behind this Morgana. The flash forced out, and there's the knockback coming out. The ignite is down, and oh, so much damage. First blood coming down onto Morgana. Yeah, that was a really good gank. The positioning was everywhere it needed to be. Zach came in from the uh, from behind Morgana and uh, pushed her just a little bit forward, and it forced Morgana to flash. She didn't get very far, and that allowed Jace to, again, flash right in front of her and knock her back with a hammer and then do all the damage after switching into the cannon mode with the ignite helping. So it put out way too much damage for her to even get away from. And there we go, finally go ahead and have that done. And in the top lane we can see the Ignite going down and that will be a dead Vladimir falling after using that flash. So very unfortunate for him, Ghost not popped on his end, but Rise now both down uh, all of his summoner spells. So there's certainly going to be the option to go and gank that lane relatively soon. We can see the pause going out. So that is fun. Um, let's see here. It looks like we're having a little bit of lag on the part of Zach, and we'll be getting back into this game here momentarily. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at just some of the starting items and builds coming out in the top lane. I'm actually going to go ahead and change these matchups because it's it's actually Rise in the top lane. We can see that Fairy Charm start, so likely going for some nice regen items to keep his mana pool nice and healthy. A Tier of the Goddess, a fairly standard item coming out from Rise, and the cloth armor from Vladimir really signaling that he thought he was going to be going up against this Jace. You can see in the bot lane the power cords coming out from Sona doing so much damage with those penetration runes coming out to really assist her Q when she goes up for that Q power cord combo. Indeed. And uh, just looking at things, uh, yes, uh, Jace went ahead and picked up his Chair of the Goddess, so he's going to be spamming as hard as he can his ultimate, which cost him nothing to do. And honestly, it's a great way to grind up your stacks on the tier, that way you can get that Monomura as soon as possible, or Mara Mon it's one of those things. And a nice job on the part of, T uh, of Tower Knight TV, they went ahead and did a lane swap here so they could go ahead and get Morgana back into a more favorable matchup, and Vladimir up against who he knew he was going to be going for. Now you can see Jace returning to the top lane, so there's the potential that they're going to try and counter this lane swap. More importantly, one of the things that this means is that the ward there is going to go ahead and catch Jace out. You can see Rise backing, so this is exactly what they're doing. They don't want to give them the advantage. They know that this Jace isn't comfortable going in this matchup, and in the dot bot lane, there we go, there's the power cord and the flash and cleanse being burned on the part of Kaylin. she's going to be forced to back out, meanwhile Zack coming in for the counter gank, it's not really going to go anywhere and both Lulu and Zack will be forced to stay back. This Jace is going everywhere he can to chase this Morgana, and Vladimir is doing the same, we might see him cut each other off, no, uh, Vlad's definitely going to try and make something into the mid lane yet again while Morgana goes up towards the top to switch. So these people are determined to 
constantly switch, and that's hurting both Ryze, Jace, and even Morgana and Vlad. This constant changing is throwing off their farm. They're losing a lot of farm potential. They're losing a lot of gank potential. Yeah, I mean, it's just a bad matchup for Ryze. More importantly, though, we can see uh, Jace in the mid lane, you know, he did go that tier. He's looking to have not exactly a passive laning phase, but he needs the time to farm. And Vladimir is weak enough uh, in the in the early game, you know, he's not a champion that really picks up till about level 9 to 12. So he does have the option of sitting there and kind of just farming up for the moment, using those ranged abilities to go ahead and attack. So the only thing that's really detrimental here is the Rise vs. Morgana matchup. That's the only thing they really have to work out here. And it's the reason why uh, that lane swap went down in the first place. Now we can see that Ryze is kind of given up here on going for this lane matchup. But you can see Morgana just pushing and pushing and pushing. And that's what was needed to happen to get uh, Saga back into this. They took a really hard hit whenever they lost those first two kills. And you can see it in the gold difference. It's not a huge lead, but 800 gold is a lot of money, especially when you're within the first seven minutes of the game. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Of course, that first blood gold is going to make quite a bit of a difference, but we'll have to see essentially what comes from that uh, in the next couple of fights, mostly because, I mean, we've seen Dooley. Dooley is one of the strongest members on the team as a whole. His positioning is absolutely phenomenal in fights, and I've seen him single-handedly carry games both in and outside of rank. so he's a very impressive player, and I'm curious to see if what he's doing is going to be enough to take out this game, because as we can see in the bot lane, there's a huge farm discrepancy at 56 farm to 38. And 4 to 1, those supports, battling it out for what little farm they actually get. <laughs> Yeah, but what this essentially means is that Caitlyn, a champion who is known for farming and nothing else but being able to farm and have a good late game, you know, that's the reason most people pick her up because she's an easy ADC, she doesn't have too many tips and tricks, you know, she's very straightforward and she's very easy to farm with. Going up against somebody like Varys who's got 20 plus farm on her now, you know, who's a lot more difficult in that respect to go ahead and handle. And you can see Sona and Varys here looking to get a little bit pokey and there we go. So Zack winding up for the go for the uh, dive onto both of them, but he's actually going to go ahead and disengage, not wanting to get in on that. You can see the 90 caliber net being forced out from Kaylin. That poke nearly taking out half of her health, and she's going to be forced to pop some health potions. Yeah, it's and the more pressure the red team can put here, the longer they are denying Zack any jungle farm keeping Morgana safe, and more importantly, keeping Vlad safe. Because as you can see, we now have three people in the mid lane, and Zack is pinned there for sake of location and to make sure Caitlyn survives. Yeah, we can see down in the bot lane, this gank finally going through, the crescendo going out, and Sona doing her best to get out of here. She's getting down very low. The exhaust, exhaust is down on Zack, rather. And here's Morgana in with the ultimate. Beautifully timed teleport on her part, and that will be the double kill for her. Meanwhile, you can see Zack there. He's down to his little blob form, thanks to Sona, and that will be the triple kill for Morgana right off the bat. An excellent teleport play went ahead and turned that entire gank around. They knew exactly how to respond and you can see Morgana just picking up that instantaneous triple. And that's exactly what she needed. Now we see Morgana with a Seeker's arm guard. Are we going to see Vladimir with one too or is he actually going to have the time now to get his Hex Hex Revolver like it is very highly recommended to get especially since he is a health based champion. It actually looks like he's building into his Seeker's arm guard right now which is not a bad idea in this matchup at all. You're looking at Caitlyn and Jace alike who are going to have a lot of heavy physical damage coming out as well. Zonius is really important to both of their kits. Vladimir not only able to, you know, kind of do damage, wait out his cooldowns, and then come back in and do even more damage. But Morgana, you're going to be diving right into the middle of fights to try and get off as much damage as you possibly can, and then dealing with uh, her ultimate, which, I mean, it's it's a great idea to go ahead and get those stuns off if you know you're going to be taking the brunt of damage by, you know, just flash ulting in there. So not a bad pickup for either of them. No, not at all. I normally see Vladimir's, again, pick up their Hex-Hex Revolver uh, pretty early, but again, with the addition of Seeker's Arm Guard, especially going against an AD matchup, you always want to try to play against your lane, but against the team as a whole. 
Exactly. So we can see Vladimir really building towards that. And I, I have to say, Vladimir, he's also got a lot of great health management right now. So he's not really having too much of an issue last hitting, keeping himself nice and healthy. Doesn't have ter uh, anything really to worry about here in this matchup. And now you can see Jace just doing his best to poke him out. But he's starting to get to the point in the game where he's doing quite a bit of damage uh quite a bit of damage and you can see in that mid lane that exchange happening rise actually getting very low taken to about a quarter health compared to morgana who's sitting pretty at about half and this just goes to show the power of that spell shield even at level one still very potent oh absolutely and as we can see now the red team is up on farm in every single respect of roll and the three to one now for morgana completely makes up for that first blood that jace got and you can see Morgana going in here. She's just trying to get that binding down into her pool. Had she managed to get that down, it would have most likely been a kill for her. But it looks like that is not going to happen. We're just going to return back to bot lane to see a lot more poke coming out from Sona. That power cord movement, probably not the best option there. She probably wanted to get a little more poke down. And now Dooley being forced to back off after taking a little bit of poke. But no, here we go. There's the ultimate. Sona picking it up with her crescendo. And we can see the Vars ultimate has gone out. A lot of damage going down onto Zack. But that is going to be the end of that engagement. Uh, interesting crescendo there, managing to pick up that kill. Yeah, you don't really expect that. And I'm pretty sure there's an oops, my bad in the chat, whether on voice or we'll, we'll never know. But it's a common thing. It's like, I swear I didn't have enough damage. Why did you hit him so hard, man? Yeah, that is that is unfortunate to see Sona pick up the kill at this point in the game. We can see Zack just returning to his jungle and the pings going down. They know these guys are being very aggressive. They've managed to get the upper hand. It's been all about farming, taking it slow and steady, and going for the engagements when they can. Now, the red team, they haven't rushed anything. They've taken a lot of care to make sure that they haven't just gone balls deep and... I'm not going to fix the scoreboard because Ryze isn't against Vlad anymore. I'm done with it. I've, I would have had to switch them back and forth like every two seconds. I'm done. But um, you could see them get a ha uh, ahead. They've been concentrating on farm and then, of course, the plays that have happened down in the bot lane to get Morgana, that triple kill, as well as the dragon for that global gold, put it all back into their favor. They waited for that one good engagement that they could go ahead and get and just snowball it, snowballed it out of control from there. You can see the gank going down in top lane. Hecarim just deciding to back off, not wanting to quite engage on this JCS. How however, he's very low in terms of health. And now Hecarim popping his ghost to go ahead and go in here. But it looks like he may... No, he's not going to call this off, but the knockback going down. And Hecarim just going to sit around here and take over the lane until Vlad can come back. Now, are we going to see Hecarim have any issues? No, he's going to get knocked back saying, I don't want to play with you no more. And Hecarim, I think, is going to be okay with this. He's going to go back to his, fa uh, his farming in the jungle, and Vladimir is going to be back in lane, as well as keep Jace pushed so that his lane is uh, protected. Yeah, and we can actually see a bushwhack going down here in the bot lane. This is scary. And oh no, Dooley's ultimate is going to go ahead and miss. What an unfortunate thing. And there we go, the binding as well. And we can see the flash coming out from Caitlyn to avoid the ultimate. So two ultimates for a flash. Uh, worth it in some respects just because of the fact that you have got the, uh, you know, such a long cooldown for that flash, but a very short cooldown in comparison to the ultimates, especially for Morgana and Varus. So now we can see control over that dragon being set up. They want to go ahead and get this the next time it's up. In the meantime, Morgana just going to go ahead and take a blue buff. And that's all it takes. We've seen the red team play patiently, even with a disadvantage and come back in full strength. We're seeing the haunting guys actually being built first for uh, Vladimir. So definitely working on that magic pen to deal even more damage for the team fights that are uh, soon to come. And we'll definitely see uh, Morgana rushing that Zonius with the Needless Lizard Rod and the Seeker's Arm Guard, of course, already being built. Yeah, we saw that failed crescendo coming out from uh... Sona, that's just very unfortunate. Now Vladimir actually engaging down onto Jace, who took a huge amount of damage here, and coming in once his cooldowns are up, 
and the flash is down, but that will be a dead chase. An excellent play on the part of this guy. And now in the mid lane, we can see Morgana getting so very low. She's doing her best to get away, but no, that punch from Zach will go ahead and take care of him. And now Varus coming up in here. He's going to look to try a no. He's just going to go back to defend at this point. How unfortunate, but that play in the top lane was absolutely wonderful. Yes, Vlad knew exactly what to do, and I think Jace didn't realize that his pool was still available, and that Vladimir knew exactly what was going to happen, and that pool saved Vla uh, Vladimir in every respect. Now the good part is, is Morgana has a teleport up here, and you can see them even putting down wards so that if they manage to go ahead and pink Ed Dragon, they have options to go ahead and give her an opportunity to come down. And there we go, there's the Varus ultimate, there is the teleport in from Morgana, and we can see the nearly instant pickoff of Zack as he's forced out of the fight, the Lulu all going down, Hecarim pelting down a lot of damage with the help of his team onto Rise, and there he go, he will fall, Jace coming in and getting down very low, and a nice binding on the part of Morgana will go ahead and secure the double kill for Dooley, and there's the triple kill coming out from Varus, and oh my goodness, Vlad managed to pick up in the midst of all of that. Zach as well. So a near ace. Caitlyn not being zoned out of that fight. She was still able to do quite a bit of damage over the wall, but it just was not enough. And no, you're not going to see a lot of damage coming over from her with only a pickaxe and the vamp scepter and two Dorn's Blades. It's not a lot of damage. It helps for farming, but when it comes to actually damaging other champions, it's not going to cut it. She is definitely trying to get that Blade of the Rune King very quickly though and i applaud her for that yeah yeah you know we saw this game start off and it was very sketchy at first you saw it being two and zero in favor of the blue team and everybody was kind of cringing but one of the nice things about this is that the red team they've kept so calm so collected about the entire thing and managed to just make the most strategic plays to go ahead and come back into this game and do so phenomenally i think that's what these guys are actually going to be known for yeah, I mean, they have an excellent late game, but even if they end up, you know, having some rough times in the early game, they're always able to sort of come back from it and play excellently towards the strengths of their comp. And I really do like this comp. This Morgana with Teleport has been absolutely huge in this game, but the entire AoE comp paired up with a Vladimir going for that double AP is really, really strong and something that is definitely hurting the blue team right now. You can see the gank from behind going down in the top lane. Morgana coming in with that binding and that ultimate, but Saga will go ahead and pick up the kill. Vladimir getting that, and there's the Zanya's popped on the part of Morgana. She's going to get down very low, one auto attack away from death, and there's the ultimate, but no, it will not be enough to save Rise as now the chase is on for Lulu, who's going to get feared, and there's the double kill for Vladimir. Holy hell. And it looks like Zach just was coming in to help and then realized it's a very poor decision and is coming in around all the way around and is going to defend the turret from Vladimir and Hecarim, assuming they uh, continue to press on. Such as this uh, Varus and Sona as they are pressing the bottom lane. Yeah, that was a crazy fight though. Morgana got out of there with absolutely no health whatsoever. A single auto attack would have been more than enough to kill her. So an excellent play on the part of that team. And she did use her ultimate very early, but a kill is a kill at this point. And they're just looking to essentially squash the blue team's hopes of coming back from this. They want to go ahead and pick them off at every turn. And they're doing a great job of using and abusing their ward coverage. So a very nice job on the part of the red team. Yes, and as a... Oh, we're going to have combat. Yeah, and it looks like we've got Jace going up against Varus here, and we can see his ultimate coming out, an excellently placed ultimate, as well as a nice crescendo coming out. And it looks like Varus and Jace will have a single trade-off, and there is a shutdown bonus for that as well. You can see Caitlyn managing to snipe Sona through, oh, through all the bodies that were there. How unfortunate for that, and that will be a two-for-one exchange. That, however, was a really nice ultimate from Sona. I was really impressed with that crescendo. A lot of them have been very hit or miss over the last couple of days that we've seen coming out from Sona on this team, but compared to some of the whiffs we saw earlier, that was excellent. Absolutely, and speaking of uh, sniping people out and picking them off, if Lulu's Glitter Lance actually would have hit Morgana when she was running away with zero health, that would have secured the kill, but that Glitter Lance was just literally a pixel out of reach. 
Yeah, and something funny I found mentioned in the chat was I want to see TDTV versus Lunette's Army. Oh, I'm sorry, but that would probably be one of the funniest games we've ever cast. In the meantime, though, it looks like Zack has gotten bullied out of top lane as that turret goes down, and he is forced to back off now, looking for the potential re-engage now that Ryze is here to help out. But I'm not exactly sure this is going to go anywhere as Vlad does have Ghost and his pool at his ability. Well, with all that said, we are seeing the red team just push in all lanes. As you can see, only the uh, outside towers for the bottom lane is the only ones that do not exist. And we're going to see them push the inhibitor turret possibly quite soon. Varus has been very determined to push that bottom lane all the way through, but has been disturbed and has to go help elsewhere. That's a nice way to put it. Yep, and now we can see the siege for the siege, siege, siege. That's that's totally the word I'm looking for. Tree bucket. Yeah, exactly. For this mid lane turret, trying to go for the damage here. You know, just going for the shortest path into those inhibitors, into that, uh, you know, nexus. And um, thank you, thank you for the messages, Blue. But leave me alone. I'm casting. Come on, man. Get 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 your head in the game. But uh, it looks like Sona and Vladimir, they're putting out a lot of pink wards around this Baron buff right now. Uh, it's safe to say that we're likely going to see some action around this probably within the next, mm, give it five to ten minutes and we'll likely start seeing some fights over Baron. If the game isn't over at that point, we could see at only 20 minutes nearly a 10k gold advantage brought up. And in the top lane, we could see a bit of poke going down onto Vladimir and Ryze as well, both taking a hefty chunk of damage. Well, it's not so much of an issue to uh, Vladimir as he can literally tide the blood or transfusion to get his health back almost instantly. So I think that's actually what we're going to see here in this engagement is uh, you're going to see Vladimir kind of be impromptu. No one's going to really mess with them. And then also he's going to be at full health and nuking your face. Yeah, we did see the potential engagement here, but both teams kind of looking to disengage. Neither is really in a position to fight, especially with the low health Zack. This would be a huge mistake on the part of the blue team if they decided to go on now. Granted, the red team isn't quite able to fight under turrets yet, so that's something that they have to keep in mind. Now, with the minions here, they may look to go for a pickoff, but it doesn't look... It looks like they're just going to be interested in sieging this turret here and then backing off. They have to pick a fight at some point, though. They can't keep letting these turrets go for free. Well, as long as they do, that gives more and more advantage to the red team. And until they realize this, oh, we might see Morgana be getting uh, picked off here. Yeah, we can see the, there we go, there is the flash. We can see the ultimate coming out from Morgana. It will manage to snare both of them. She will fall to Jace, but now Vlad coming in here and Sona as well. We can see the cross crescendo going out from her and Vladimir doing his best to juke. And there is one, the shutdown bonus going down. The cleanse coming out from Caitlyn, but it will not be enough as the double kill has been secured. And it looks like Jace is going to be left by himself for now. Lulu coming in with a little bit of wards, but it's not going to make any difference. And the red team is going to take this time to go ahead and just steal another turret. So we're seeing a lot of action happen. Let's put these ADC side by side. We have a Varus with an Infinity Edge, and it's uh, looking to progress and do something so much worse. As we have uh, Caitlyn also with an Infinity Edge, still rocking those twin Dorns, showing that she doesn't have a lot of progress. So hopefully this will get turned around. Yeah, we can see Varus aiming for that Phantom Dancer now, going for more attack speeds and little, a little bit more critical hit on top of the Vamp Scepter he already has. He's looking to hit fast and he's looking to hit hard which is an excellent way to do that, getting as many stacks as he can up for his Blighted Quiver. And now the pings are going down. It looks like the blue team may actually go and make a move for a counter Baron. And this would be something that would be very interesting for them to do because the entire red team has been forced to back now. But it actually doesn't look like they're going to do it. They're going to take Dragon instead. And to me, this just spells a huge mistake. Morgana is down in the bot lane pushing. If they had gone ahead and taken the Baron when they had the chance, they may have actually been able to steal it without having to worry about uh, any contesting on the part of the red team. Exactly, and we're seeing no ward coverage for the red team on Baron anymore. As you can tell, it's been at least three minutes now since uh, Sona has made such a lovely display of the Baron pit. So now we can see only the blue team has vision. So it's definitely very possible the blue team can make a move on it, assuming they are not forced to their base. 
And we'll have to see what happens now because we can see the pings coming down over blue buff and it actually looks like this is warded and Rise coming in here is going to be forced back to lane as the red team goes ahead and just takes that for themselves. And speaking of the red team taking things for themselves, it looks like they're focused on this uh, top middle tier turret while Sona was uh, clearing wards. However, she missed the one in the Baron pit, probably because she is too focused on getting back to her team to do what she needs to do best. It's probably a good idea at this point, though. This crescendo is going to play a huge role. You can see Morgana going for those spell shields on Varus, and essentially they're playing a protect the dually comp, and it's not that I blame them at all, either. It's a very, very good way for them to go about things at this point in time, simply because of how strong Varus is and how game-changing his damage is right now. Absolutely. You would only like better fit for Protect the Lunat comp, right? I, I love Protect the Lulu, but we can see going in here, Jace just about to get picked off, and there's a Flash Ultimate coming out from Morgana, multiple Flashes being uh, forced out, and there's the Ultimate from Varus, the Giant Growth coming out, but it's not going to be enough, and a nice crescendo by Sona will go ahead and help net that kill on Caitlyn, despite the Flash that came out, and the GGs are coming out, these inhibitors going down, they will not be able to defend this, and this will be it, even if the Surrender doesn't come out. So Tower Dive TV team is going to go ahead and take home this quarterfinal games, and now move into the semifinals for the Tower Dive TV weekly number 28. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, and we will get to this in just a moment. I seriously thought they were about to give Lulu a penta there. Uh, well, they definitely let, uh, yeah, poor Matsu, what a man. Yeah, what a man. I'm just gonna sit at your fountain while Lulu shoots me, I don't care. Exactly.